Hey, what's up, everybody? Today I am here with the incredible Adam Tuminaro, great friend of mine and incredible drummer. Uh, absolutely a blast when he's in the studio and hanging out. And uh, we both are Pearl artists, love Pearl drums. And so today we are talking about Pearl drums. What are we talking about? Yeah, so we got, we have two very different kits behind us they look kind of similar from far away um but they're they're very different so we got a road show that's right behind me this is pearl's entry level kit yep. right and i think you described it best it's basically a full drum set in a box it's everything you need from the throne to the hardware to the cymbals like all of it's included in one box at one very low price it's pearl's entry level kit and then we have the master's maple gum behind casey which is an incredible kit. It's like a stunning kit that we both recorded on this in different environments and you know even the engineers that record this kit will tell you like it's, it's a really amazing kit. So you know we understand there's a spectrum of players right not everybody can afford uh, you know a four thousand plus dollar drum set. Just for the shells. Just you know, the shells. Like it doesn't right. come with the hardware none of that stuff that's the difference between this and that as well is the right. fact that you get hardware with that like you, you're ready to play with that kit. Right so these kits are in two different worlds but at the same time there's things that you can do to bring a kit that's you know a little bit on the lower end that, that you can do to, to bring it to a higher level to make it sound good. So we're gonna start out today by playing this kit right as it comes out of the box and then show you some things that you can do to make it sound, you know, maybe not like a $4,000 kit, but make some dramatic changes to really make it a useful, like, like awesome instrument for a pretty incredible price, right? Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna do something that we we don't recommend. Um, we're just gonna do not try this at home. <laughs> we're gonna play this as hard as you possibly can, probably harder than we would normally play. And we should also say this is not how a a beginner or a young or early drummer would play. But we kind of want to see how much damage we can do specifically to like the cymbals and the heads. I'm expecting the heads to be useless yeah. after we do this. Cymbals, I don't know if we'll get a crack. Maybe with some fatter sticks Maybe or something. Maybe a little waviness, you know. Yeah, yeah a little, turn little, it into little. Uh, Any effect symbol. Yeah, exactly. Maybe it'll sound cool. <laughs> but we should also say that what we're what we're putting to the test as well are the shells and the hardware itself too, because that stuff has to keep up with heavier playing for sure. So while we are going to try and destroy this set, I do expect everything to hold up, kind of except the symbols in the heads. Yeah. But. We'll find out. Maybe it'll just explode too. And, and I mean, it, this is really just a dumb thing to do, but we're just having fun because we are upgrading the drum heads and we are upgrading uh, the cymbals. And so showing how the kit sounds better with those upgrades and also, you know, why not have some fun? They, they were going to go in the trash anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. Boom. Well, all right. Well, watch your knees and legs. I don't oh, want yeah, yeah. to injure you, brother. Knock, knock <laughs> me out. Right. Get, these in. get your ears. Yeah, please. Please do ear protection for this. <laughs>
Bro, it's been so long <laughs> since I've played on a cymbal like this, I forgot how easy it actually starts to become wavy. And like... It was instantly. I mean... <laughs> it looks bad on camera. This is like... Basically, Pearl includes these so that you have something to hit as a new drummer because... You know, Pearl is not a cymbal manufacturer, so, uh, it, you know... It, it, right. I didn't expect much, but uh, it is funny that... Uh, I mean, you already have created quite the, uh, the aesthetic. <laughs> you can of... see individual stick hits yeah. <laughs> as they came in. And honestly, the same with the hi-hat. Not as bad, but, like, check out that hi-hat edge. Hey, I bet eventually they're just going to fuse together. They're going to turn into the... Is it the Zildjian Master Sounds with the wavy oh, yeah, bottom? Yeah, yeah. The, the air release? That's what we should That's do. That's what we did, yeah. If we can yeah. replicate it, then we can sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Right. Exactly. <laughs> damage to the hi-hats <laughs> like the the <laughs> the top hat is melting into the bottom hat like they're becoming the same shape <laughs> we're gonna get some good b-roll of that i've never seen a hi-hat do that before <laughs> it just sounds like uh, it sounds like a really dry gong drum now. Yeah, like just a doo -doo. little bit of a thud, but nothing to it. <laughs> sounds like the final breath of a dying animal. This <laughs> under the road show on Pearl's website. Yeah. it sounds like the dying, the final breath of a dying animal. Exactly. Don't, don't quote him on that one. Have you ever hunted a wild boar? The moment before it dies. It's, <laughs> That's what this floor top sounds like. Seriously, it's a little too early to get this warning. <laughs> We're like, wait, where's the lunch break? Uh, yeah, so this video may or may not end up being separate, may end up being just a fun outtake. Right. But the idea here is we are switching out these heads, putting on some Evans UB2s. Oh, yeah. It's going to sound awesome, and that's why we destroyed these, so... <laughs> So much better. It's almost like it's a different kit. It's just... Like instantly more enjoyable to play. Not that it wasn't fun playing before, but now I'm just like, it feels better because it sounds better. A lot of punch in that kick.
All right, so we have officially made some upgrades. Um, all of the heads are changed, pretty much everything. The only head we didn't change was the rezo side of the bass drum. Yep. That was it, but everything else has been swapped. Uh, so we did UV2s on all the toms. That's probably the most dramatic change, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. they just instantly sound so much better. Um, and we talked about those a little bit. Like, they're just incredibly durable. They work on everything. Um, we also kind of found that we didn't really need a lot of muting on them. We have a little bit of a, like a gel mute on this 10 inch rack tom. Didn't really need it on the 12, didn't really need it on the floor tom. Yeah. Um, and then for snare, we went with an HD dry, which I don't know, man, like, I, I like the HD dry on every snare I've ever put it on. Like, for sure. it's one of those for sure. Kind of like the UV2, just really universal, works well. Yeah. Uh, we did Evans Hazy 300 on the bottom uh, of the, that's the, the snare rezo side. Mm. Kind of the same, like every snare I own has an Evans Hazy 300 on the bottom. Yep. And then G1 Clears yep. on the bottom mm -hmm. of the heads, yep. Um, kick Drum is an EMAD 2. And again, it's another one of those Evans heads, just like if you can't make that head sound good, it, then you have bigger problems, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, but it comes with the two muffling rings, so we actually use the bigger of the two muffling rings that it comes with. And right. that just, I mean, it really takes away a lot of your difficulty with too much resonance. I right. mean, we still put a pillow inside the kick as well, but the, right. and just that head on its own provides a lot. Right, and every kick drum is different, but this was a particularly ringy kick drum, mm -hmm. right? It just had a lot of resonance. And sometimes you just want that punch to be tightened up. And so an EMAD or an EMAD 2 is a really good choice to control a kick drum sound that's like a little bit too much of that boomy kind of sound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a pillow in the bass drum works really well. If it's not a pillow, then you can go to like, I don't know, a thrift store and spend $4 on a bunch of old t-shirts and throw them in there. Like anything works. Um, to Do you want to show them what it's like with the pillow and without the pillow? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so kick that and then I'll pull the pillow out. All right, so this is pillow. Oh, actually, wait, let's pull the pillow out first. Okay. And this isn't, it's not like a huge pillow or anything. Right. Just a, just a small pillow. Sometimes you want to put more than that. Sure. So this would basically be the same kick drum that you heard before, except with the EMAD 2. And now there's nothing in the pillow. Sounds like this. Now we'll add a small pillow. It's a really tiny pillow too. Boom. Yeah, big difference. Put that right on the, the resonant head and that will take away a lot of the, the boominess. If you put it on the uh, batter head, it won't take away as much boominess, but it will take, a, it'll, dead in the attack in a little bit of a way. Yeah. Right, and there are products that companies make. Evans actually makes a really cool one. Uh, I think it's called the EQ Pad. Yep. That's the name of it, I right? I have that in a lot of the kick drums here. I just didn't have an extra one laying around. Right, it's basically a fancy shaped pillow that gets Velcroed to the bottom of the kick drum so it doesn't move around. But at a drum set like, you know, at a drum set that's at this price point, like just throw a pillow in the bass drum yep. and it'll be fine. Like it'll totally fix it. So night and day on the kick drum for mm -hmm. sure. And all we really did was upgrade uh, the, the batter side head to the EMAD 2 and then chuck a pillow inside. And it's a completely different kick drum for sure. Yeah, and the, the HD dry, it, the reason it's called the dry is because it has those little pinpoint holes mm -hmm. all around the outside of it. And because of that, it takes away a lot of the extra ring. That snare drum was ringing a lot to begin with. Yeah. And then the EQ pod, which is what the little red uh, pieces that are on the drums there, Please those stand. are EQ pods. That is Evan's new dampening product. It just came out. Um, you get a nice little silver case and it has multiple sizes. They got bigger ones and smaller ones. And I mean, a little bit goes a, a long way. Like this drum has maybe a third of one on it and then the snare has about half of one on it. And right. that's all we needed on this kit, which honestly, you know, years ago before the Evan GV2 heads and before some of the, the tips and tricks and, and better tuning, like I would have had multiple moon gels on every single drum, right. multiple EQ pods on every single drum, you right. know, because that was the easiest way to get with a ring. But these heads are so easy to tune that like this is not a high end floor tom. And yet, just put the head on there, replace right. the heads, and we have like right. a nice thud, a good control of the overall ringing. Yep. I mean, there's no annoying overtones. There's yeah. nothing that needs to be done to it. Yeah. 
And yeah, same kind of with like like the snare. Like you don't even necessarily have to buy a bunch of dampening products and try and kill it that way. Sometimes your head choice can be the, the first smartest thing that you can do. Putting an HD dry or any type of like vented snare drum head, sometimes it can take away all of that ugly, ringy, clangy sound that you can have. Um, and I think this snare sounds great. It's honestly, in my opinion, like the most impressive change from just yeah. swapping out the heads. Like immediately it sound, it goes from a snare that sounds like it's worth about a hundred bucks to like a three or four hundred dollar snare sound, right? It's hard to put numbers and prices on that yeah. stuff, but it just sounds like a higher quality drum instantly and we did very little, you know? And Evans has a tune-up kit, which comes with a new top head, new rezzo head, new snare wires, and yep. some EQ pods, and everything that you would need just for a snare drum. So say you have a cheaper snare drum that you want to sound better, right. their, their tune-up kit, it's not exactly what we use because it doesn't come with the HD drive, but right. I have done a couple of snare drums with the tune-up kits, and it's a good way of getting everything you need all in one package, yeah. like cleaning oil and like cleaning cloth. It's yeah, like, and not that expensive. No, yeah. not at all. Awesome. Yeah, man, so, yeah. this kit sounded fun. We got a lot more stuff planned, but it's so much more fun to play than it was like 45 minutes ago, for sure. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying when I was playing it. I was like, oh man, it really feels like the the feeling of the experience of what it sounds like behind the kit right. really affects, like, and that's the purpose of this video, is to show that although you do not have a high-end drum set sitting in front of you, it can sound more like a high-end drum set, and that, will give you the confidence in your playing, it will give you, and, and a lot of it is the way that you approach the drum too, the way you play the drum. Like you could make this drum sound two different ways. You right. Know, like it, the of way course. you play the drum also affects it, but with good heads, it doesn't matter that you don't have the nicest drum set in the world. Right. You can still right. be confident, you can still enjoy the playing experience with just a few small changes. Yeah. And well, and take it from guys that have been playing drums for a, a really long time, like, there is like a feedback that kind of happens when you're playing an instrument that sounds good. It changes the way that you play. You know, it changes the way, like how you feel about your instrument does actually affect how you play. Imagine playing a drum set that you absolutely hate. Like it's none of the sizes that you would pick. It's all the symbols that you're not into, right? Like hearing something that you don't like changes how you play drums. And hearing something that you love, a sound that you really enjoy, it not only makes you more excited to play, you know, to sit down and play, but for me, it just opens up a lot more creativity. I can actually like say more and express more when I like the voice yep. that's in front of me a bit. So it's it's one of those things. It's um, we don't want you to have a better drum sound, you know, just so you know your bandmates are happy or that sort of thing. It's really like your playing experience will change. It'll put a bigger or a different smile on your face when you sit down to play, and um, it, it's worth doing. You know, it's an it'll, awesome experience. It'll make you want to practice more. Yeah, like, if seriously. If you enjoy playing the kit and you enjoy the way that you're sounding on it, then you're going to want to practice more, which is going to make you a better drummer, which is going to make the kit that sounds better already sound even better because you're learning to exactly to, to play it better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. all just a snowball. You know, like, <laughs> Seriously, it is like that. A, a little bit of uh, care and maintenance on a kit, whether or not it's a high-end kit or not, and next thing you know, you know you're you're, you're enjoying it more. Yeah, so, absolutely. Heck yeah! Cool, well, man. Now we're gonna play this thing and showcase it next to a Masters Maple Gum Kit, which is some of the best shells on the market. Yeah. Much more expensive kit. This kit's like five hundred dollars. That kit's like four thousand dollars. Just to show that yes, you know, if you have the money and you really want that, that dream kit, there are advantages to it, but this kit right here with good tuning and good heads, you know, like you don't have to rush out and buy a new drum set thinking that's going to make you better. What's going to make you better is the way that you approach the kit, the way that you tune the kit, the way that it sounds right. as a whole. Yeah, and this sounds weird, but if we wanted to, we could mess that $4,000 drum set up by placing the microphones poorly, picking really bad heads, tuning it really bad, muffling it incorrectly, and then if we did all of the opposite, here, we did everything correctly, yeah. we could make this kit sound better than that kit. I don't think that's the video that we're gonna make today, because that would be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be really cringy to like intentionally make an, an expensive kit sound bad. But that's reality, you, that actually could be the case, you know? Um, yeah, that's not what we're, do, what we're yeah. doing, but you, yeah. You know, you know David Raouf, R -R, yeah. he actually has a video where it's like $5,000 drum set with bad heads versus like $500 drum set with good right. heads. Right, exactly. And it, it shows that like there, there is a difference, but the like we, we want you to walk away from this video, video thinking to yourself like, you know, $2,000 a new drum set isn't necessarily going to be the answer to right. you get becoming a better player, you know? You yeah. can sound... 
as a good drummer, you can sound incredible on this kit, you know? So it's, yeah. that's, that's kind of what it boils down to. Yeah, man. So we just wrapped up filming. Goodness, we've spent some time on these drum sets for sure. Now, I think, needless to say, nothing holds up to that Masters Maple Gum. That kid is so ridiculous. It yeah. just sounds so good all the time. But it's funny because when we were in uh, you know, your control room, listening back to the mixes of these two kits, more than once we would have to ask, which kit is it, is it that we're listening to? When we're just hearing the audio, there were times where we actually, for just a moment, couldn't tell which was the $500 drum set and which was the $4,000 drum set. Now, of course, if you really sat us down and asked us and really listened, you know, of, of, yes, of course, you can tell the difference. But I think the point being, like, we made that roadshow sound awesome, right? Yeah. And that's like, I mean, the point of the video is not like the $4,000 kit is not better than the roadshow kit. You know, we were right. never, we were never <laughs> discussing that, that. Don't buy a pro kit, get yeah. a roadshow and no, you're done. That's, yeah. that's not the point of the video, but like we, we very much believe that a large portion of the success behind your instrument comes from tuning, it comes from good drum heads, it comes from the way that you play the kit, the way right. that you approach the kit, and not necessarily 100% like buying a high-end kit is going to make you sound that much better. You know, like, yeah. I mean, we were talking percentages and like well-tuned, good bearing edges on a roadshow kit with good heads mm -hmm. played by somebody who knows how to pull good sounds out of a kit, maybe that's what, 90% of, yeah. the, of the way there? Yeah, you're 90% of the way there to a, to a sound that's going to be worthy of being put on a record or impress people at a, in a live situation yeah. or all the stuff that you would want a good drum sound for. Yeah, and there, there, there's a point of diminishing returns, and I don't say that to discourage people from buying high-end gear, because, you know, as guys that have played really expensive gear before, like, yeah, it, it'll blow your mind sometimes, yep. like, like what, what these companies can do when they have these unlimited budgets. Um, 
But, you know, I first learned this in the camera lens world. You know, when you buy a thousand dollar camera lens, you know, it, it's really nice. It looks incredible. It's got a sharp image. It's just beautiful. But when you spend $10,000 on a camera lens, it's not a hundred times better. It's just like a little bit yeah. better in some ways, right? Yep. And that's not a one-to-one -one of what we did today in these two kits. Uh, but at a certain point, as you begin to spend more and more and more and more money, you're really, you're really getting down to these minute details that only very specific situations very professional situations actually require. So would I use a roadshow kit on a platinum album or an album that I hoped was gonna be platinum? Yeah. No, of course not, because the details matter. Like at that level of professionalism, they matter a lot. Um, but it's one of those things where it just depends on your circumstance, you know, where you are in your, your career or your hobby or whatever it is that drums mean to you. Um, it is possible to make a drum set like the one behind me, this Rocho here, sound really, really good. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it, man. Like, I think we were both, we were both surprised and really impressed with the sounds that we got out of this thing, yeah. you know? And I think that, like, the Rocho was kind of the most, uh, like the furthest end of the spectrum of like what's the most budget kit that we can use for this scenario to right, showcase right but like in all reality like neither one of us if you came to us and said like hey you know i want to be a pro drummer um and or i am becoming a pro drummer i'm starting to do gigs i'm starting to get recording sessions neither one of us are going to say go buy a roadshow but at the same right. time neither one of us are going to look at you in the face and say you have to have a master's maple gum right. in order true. to be successful. Yeah. My first thing would be, hey, you should check out Decade Maple or you should check out Session Studio Select mm -hmm. from Pearl, which is half or a quarter of the cost of this kit over here. Right. But you know, if you come to us and said, hey, I have $8,000 to spend on a drum set, get the $4,000 kit, get the hardware, get the, the cymbals, because you can't come to, like, you can't have $1,000 to spend on a drum set and think that all that a thousand dollars can go to the, the shelves you have to have symbols you know like right. i mean you have to have hardware you have to have those other pieces of the equation and so sometimes there's that middle ground that like can right. really like find the w what your money can do for you you yeah. know like you don't you don't need four thousand drum shells $4,000 drum shells when you can get $2,000 drum shells and $1,500 worth of really nice cymbals and $500 worth of hardware, right. you know? Like there, there is a line of what makes the most sense with your money. Of course. If there's anything that I, <clears throat> I would hope people could take away from a video like this, it's that the details matter. And by details, I mean heads and tuning and proper, you know, mic placement and mixing. Um, and it, all of the things that we did to this drum set to make it sound the way that it did, I mean, it just, in my eyes, it almost like it doubled its value. You know, like when you think a $500 drum set might sound like, to me this sounds like a $1,000 drum set now, yep, or a $1,200 sure. drum set, right? Um, so there's so many things that you can do uh, as far as like paying attention to the details of what makes a good drum sound, that just going and blowing $4,000, it won't solve all your problems if you put bad heads on it and you don't know how to tune, or place microphones, or mix, or a lot, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's totally possible to to, to waste your money. Um, that said, we're both owners of high-end drum sets, and we love them and we appreciate them, but if we didn't know how to tune them and didn't know how to, you know, properly record them and make the, make use of them, we'd be better off with a roadshow and then learning what we're doing, you yeah. know? So, <laughs> sure. so, yeah, if you happen to be a roadshow owner or you're someone who says, you know, hey, that's my budget. My budget is five or six or 700 bucks, and that's kind of where I'm at. Man, there's a way to do this um, where you can get a sound that will really just blow you away and take it from two, you know, decade plus professional drummers. Like we're really impressed with this kit. It was awesome. And we we're talking more about the cheap kit than we are the incredible, you know, master series that's right behind you. So hopefully that says a lot about what we learned today making this video, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we have played so many different kits and so many different types right. of wood. And like at the end of the day, yes, if, one, either one of us were like, hey, we are going to a session tomorrow. We're both taking the Master's Maple Gum to right, the session. Right, of course, right. But a lot of that is more of the playing experience, like the, the die-cast hoops, the, the better hardware on it, the right. better mounting systems. I mean, it's an incredibly beautiful kit. The, the wood itself does make a percentage of difference in the way that the tone of the drum is. Sure. But all those things are not your first priority. Right. Your first priority is good heads, good tuning, 
you know, making sure that you understand how to pull a great sound out of an instrument. Because mm -hmm. we were talking about this earlier, you could take a Masters Maple Gum Kit and make it sound bad. Now, it yeah. is, it's harder, <laughs> it's harder to make that sound bad than it is to make a roadshow sound bad. But it's it's not impossible. You yeah. know, if you don't know how to tune and you don't know what kind of drum heads to put on the kit and what's going to like help get the sound that you're yeah. looking for, you could be very disappointed with a $4,000 drum set. Yeah, you could feel like you wasted your money. Yeah. Totally possible. Yeah. And that's like... I mean, that's that's the key to all of this is that it is a progression. You know, like mm -hmm. over the years, we didn't start out with this kit. We didn't start out yeah, with a really high-end kit. I played the Pearl Export for many, many years, and then I played another Pearl Export, and right. then I eventually played a Pearl Decade Maple, and then I eventually played a Pearl Session, and like I worked my way up, yeah. and I certainly, like once you've gotten to working your way up, it is it is hard to come back down, except for the fact that I could take that to a gig and I could be proud and yeah, happy to play it exactly. because it sounds great. No yeah. audio engineer is going to listen back to those takes and be like, no, this isn't good enough for, for the live you know, right. gig. Like, this isn't good right. enough for the small club. This isn't good enough for you yeah. know, a YouTube video or like just showcasing or practicing your skills. It's 100% his. Yeah, absolutely, man. Dude, what a fun day. This is yeah. a cool day. It this was. is the first time I've actually had kids of this different... like. I don't know, just the spectrum of value, right? Like, like I don't want to say the cheapest of the cheap because you could buy some yeah. ch Chinese Amazon drum set that is nowhere near this quality. But like, there's a big difference in quality here. But the first time in my career, I've actually had these two like levels of drum set um, in the same room in one day and played them back and forth. It was cool, man. I feel like I learned some stuff too. And um, I think next, what are we? We're gonna attempt. We're gonna attempt a drum cover. Yes. I don't know if we're sold on whether or not it's gonna come out. We're yeah. not. Or we're, we're, we're going to be able to play. Fun, yeah, we're going to have know. some fun and see if we can do it. But we're using these kits. So yeah. if you see a cover come out, um, you know, within a few weeks of this video coming out, know that that's what we uh, we went for and we made it happen. Yeah. Or not. Sorry Sa about that. Same exact heads <laughs> on both kits. Yes, same we're not changing anything. Same exact microphones. <laughs> same exact preamps. Like we. You know, as much as this was not scientific, it was scientific. Like right. from a drumming and video content perspective. Practically it was, we, yeah. We made sure the kits were the same sizes, you know, 10 by 7, 10 by 7, 12 by 8, 12 by right. 8, 22. I think that's a 22 by 16, that's a 22 we by 18. We matched all the mics like, and the yeah. preamps and stuff. Uh, right, Exactly. Yeah. It yeah. was all Apollo, incredible preamps, incredible Earthworks audio mics that both yeah. of us love. So, like, we wanted to make sure that we were recording these kits with the utmost quality and matching with the utmost quality so that you really truly you can't you can't be like oh hey you know it was all post production or like oh hey right. like this kid had different heads on it so it's not even really a fair comparison it is an identical comparison yeah the best we could pull off in a yeah. day seriously it's, it's pretty close yeah so yeah a, a lot of fun let's uh let's jam a little bit more let's and, do it uh, play all some right. beautiful drums yeah thanks for watching let's go